Rutgers University in Piscataway, New Jersey. It's St. John's and Rutgers at the rack, one of the toughest places in all of college basketball. Sounds of the Rutgers University band behind us at the Lewis Brown Athletic Center in Piscataway, New Jersey. St. John's Red Storm and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, where for almost a decade, Bob Wenzel led the Scarlet Knights, in fact, to two wins over St. John's. Since then, Red Storm won six in a row. I'm Mike Crispino, joined by Bob Wenzel, former Rutgers coach, back here at home. He's almost like the mayor of the place, but we're going to talk basketball. This afternoon, Rutgers has a chance to win their first conference game. They're a good rebounding team. St. John's has not done it that well yet. Well, St. John's is small and Rutgers is powerful inside. There was a coming out party the other night against Syracuse. Kareem Wright, 6'9", 285 pounds, had done precious little this season so far, but in these situations here, you'll see what he does. Goes to the offensive boards, takes up a great deal of space inside posting up. Not only that, Kareem can shoot that jump shot from the free throw line. He was 10 of 11 from from the free throw line. Daryl Dawkins look alike. And Rashad Kent, the Beef Brothers up front for Rutgers. Averaging a double-double is Rashard Kent. After St. John's, they've won four of five. They're led by a fabulous freshman backcourt tandem. You couldn't ask for much more from two young guys. Omar Cook is the most exciting freshman, I think, in the United States. He handles the ball and, and passes with the best of them. Classic two-on-one right here with Willie Shaw, his partner in the backcourt. Two freshmen penetrate, dish. Shaw is a sweet, shooting, smooth, 6'6", swing player, and Omar Cook finds him all of the time. During the course of the season, Shaw benefits from his penetration, and Shaw should take Cook out to dinner. Well, Willie Shaw loves it from the corner. Kevin Bannon has never beaten St. John's. It's his seventh try. He'll go against Mike Jarvis when we return. Starting lineups for this 26th meeting between St. John's and Rutgers. Omar Cook, Willie Shaw at the guards, as we talked about. Anthony Glover, the junior, will play the forward position, averaging 16 points and six rebounds. The other forward, Alpha Bangura, the sophomore transfer from Monmouth. And in the middle, the freshman, Mohamed Jakite for Mike Jarvis. As for Kevin Bannon, Mike Sherrod, Todd Billett in the backcourt. Jeff Greer and Rashad Kent at the forwards. Kareem Wright, the sophomore center. Billett leading the way with 16 and a half points and just over four assists as St. John's comes in having won four or five and the difficulties of Rutgers to start this Big East season are graphically shown right there. Well difficult but close you know almost games those two at Villanova at Notre Dame tough places to win and of course their best game so far this year was against Syracuse in their close loss. So three losses by a total of 12 points and as we mentioned Mike Jarvis you see there 61 and 23 with St. John's since around Driving's had great success in the Big East. 28-9. Kevin Bannon now in his fourth year. 56 and 50 for Rutgers. Well, Mike, the interesting thing about this game, both teams are eight and six. St. John's very youthful, you know, starting the freshman backcourt. Rutgers with, with Billet as the three-point shooter, and the emergence of Wright will be very, very important. Inside game versus outside game in this one. And as we talked about on the top of the broadcast, the rebounding battle uh, should be interesting because Rutgers has done a very good job of that. And they've got big people, and St. John struggles to keep up on the defensive and offensive glass. Well, I think Mike Jarvis wants Jaquite in there to take a good look at Shaw, sporting his uh, favorite hairdo. I think that makes every New Yorker play a little bit like that famous Nick. <laughs> Mike Sherrod to inbound. Down low, uh, traveling violation on Rashad Kent. Well, Kent had the flu in their last game, and despite his absence, and he's their really core guy inside, averaging a double-double, uh, they were able to play Syracuse very tightly. Now, Syracuse does not have much of center play in that game. Selick was out. He is now reinstated. So Syracuse back with a bigger guy now. Entertaining Omar right here. Aggressive man-to-man. -man. Rutgers comes out in, and Omar Cook turns it over. Our officials this afternoon, Andre Patillo, Frank Scagliotti, and Anthony Green. I love this kid, Cook, boy. He can really play. 
Bowers survived from Robeson High School right here. Good matchup at the point guard spot. He'll want to show that he can play. Down low, quick hand, St. John's with a steal. Mark Cook hands to Willie Shaw. A little bit less than a sellout crowd this afternoon at the rack, of course, with the Giants in the NFC Championship game just up the road. Willie Shaw got his own rebound and the putback for the first basket of the game. Well, Shaw has 6-6 and Billet only 6-1, so he's got a big size advantage in that matchup if, if Rutgers decides to stay man-to-man. -man. Sherrod is guarding Cook. The teams met just once last year, and Jeff Billet was slowed down considerably by St. John's at New York. Here is Cook running. Bounce pass to Shaw. The layup for two. Oh, uh, how you diagram it, huh, Mike? You know, this kid does fancy things, but he also does very consistent things. And again, the freshman tandem in the backcourt hooking up. Cook's already had a 17 assist game, best in the Big East this year, and a 15 assist game. Turnaround jump hook, airballed. Rashard can't get the rebound, the putback, and he got fouled by Chiquite. Right here, you see classic two-handed bounce pass, the catch above the waist, and the rest is easy. And at the other end, Rutgers answering Omar Cook by pounding the ball inside, and Kent gets his opportunity, where it is an adventure for him at the free throw line. Chiquite's first. Rashad Kent has the first free throw. 31% for the year from the free throw line. But a big man from Fairmont, West Virginia, takes up a great deal of space inside. This is the second one. There's going to be a lane violation against St. John. So Kent has another opportunity. Well, obviously, for a big man like Kent, free throw shooting is ultra important. He's going to go to the line a lot. He well, gets he, hit a lot. Well, and, and because he shoots poorly, people will foul him, knowing that it's better off sending him to the line than letting him get an easy one close to the basket. This is the second, nearly got his own rebound, but Omar Cook has it. Running the right side, Alpha Bengora. What a tough shot on the run, on the baseline by Bangora, and it's 6-1 Red Storm. Bangora's presence in emergence, as you said, he was a transfer from Monmouth. Earlier in the year, he thought he was a jump shooter. Now he's become a slasher, and that's what he does well. St. John's needs him to do that. So important to have that kind of player as well to set up outside the offense. That time, the ball deflected out of bounds. It will be Rutgers' ball. Well, Todd Bill hustling after that one. This kid can really shoot from the perimeter. And, of course, his brother Jeff played for me at Rutgers. And now Jeff coaching his brother. Only the first time in the history of the Big East that a brother is coaching a brother on a team. Todd Billett's jumping good for three. So the first bucket coming from Todd Billett on cue. Well, he can really knock it in. And he's a catch-and-shoot guy. But can put the ball on the floor a little bit, becoming a well-rounded player. Willie Shaw looking for Glover down low. He's guarded by Jeff Greer, now Bengora with Billet on him. Rutgers plays solid man-to-man. -man. Anthony Glover's jumper is good. You now the funny thing about these guys, Glover at 6'6", is really a hellacious around the basket, but he's developed this little pop-out move, and he'll know he'll have to do that against the beefier front line of Rutgers responding well. And the answer coming back from Rutgers and Billet. He's got six. There his brother Jeff cheering him on from the sideline. Jeff taught Todd how to shoot the basketball, and lessons well learned. They got a pretty good backcourt on the bench for Kevin Bannon. <laughs> Jeff Billet, Danny Hurley. Not too bad, guys from New Jersey have been extremely well. Cook tried to go down low, stepping in, and a nice deflection made that time by Kareem Wright. So on the turnover, Rutgers can take the lead. Kite doing a pretty good job inside. If you watch off the ball, folks, inside with he and Wright, they're trying to go to Wright right here. Kite forced him off the block, and he's not going to be as effective there. Wright, little jump step, up fake nicely, but back rimmed it. But right the other night, playing against Syracuse, played against smaller players. Jaquite gets a hand up. Omar Cook shot missed. Bangora couldn't control. It will be Rutgers' ball, 16-05. Remaining here in the first half. Jaquite will sit down, and Daniel, uh, Donald Emanuel wearing number 33. In for St. John's. 
Emmanuel was deep in the bench, but lately he's been playing about 16 minutes a game, giving them some relief at that spot. When they go big, those two share the duties, Jaquite and Emmanuel. And Emmanuel now will be on right. Emmanuel, a kid from Texas, an upperclassman. Rutgers clearly trying to establish right early in the game, and certainly not playing quite as well as he started out the other night against Syracuse. Kareem Wright tried to go baseline, bounced it off Emmanuel's foot. We shall return to the Lewis Brown Arena. 8-7 St. John's, you're watching Big East Basketball. You know, Bob Wenzel here. Jeff Billett wide open in the early going. Todd Billett, his brother Jeff, was wide open on the bench. Right there, he knocks one in from the, from the top of the key, and then off the screen, Shaw is trailing, nowhere in sight, very late. And six points for Todd Billett early in this game, keeping his team in it. There his brother Jeff and uh, Dan Hurley, brother of Bobby Hurley, who was a great star at Duke. And of course, those two doing a great job right here on Kevin Bannon's staff. They look like they could still play a little bit. Looks like they go to the same barbers, too. <laughs> well, Jeff Billett has more points already this afternoon than he had in 34 minutes the last time these two teams met at Madison Square Garden last January. He shot one of nine that day. St. John's won it by four. So Todd Billett already has started well with six points on two three-pointers. He was jacked up before the game. I was talking to him. I think he likes this matchup with Cook. He's now on Cook. And Sherrod is guarding Shaw. A little different changeup right now. Size-wise, that helps Rutgers a little better. Angora tried to penetrate with the dribble, nearly lost it. Glover came up with it, so they'll reset. Omar Cook's jumper good. Set it up. It's a two-pointer standing on the line. Omar laughing a little bit about that, Mike. He wanted that to be a three, but it, I think size 11 instead of 10 and a half made that a two. Beef Brothers going to work right here. Kent can set some screens, believe me. Strong move inside by Wright, but uh, Manuel got a piece of it. And St. John's on the run with a three-point lead. Nice defensive play by Emmanuel. What tough shot, airballed. Emmanuel saves, back to Glover. Trying to step in the lane, but Anthony Glover will be called for an offensive foul. Crispino Bob Wenzel at the rack, Rutgers University, Piscataway, New Jersey, for Rutgers and St. John's. Scarlet Knights coming in 0-3 in the conference. St. John's coming in 2-1 off a big win over Boston College. And that came after a heartbreaking overtime loss to the University of Connecticut. Reggie Jessing, the only senior for Mike Jarvis, has entered the game. He wears number 41. So far, you know, you talked about the beef up front. St. John's has done a good job up until that shot right there of preventing Rutgers from getting inside. Dabney comes in, makes his presence felt immediately. Eugene Dabney has his first bucket of the afternoon. Here's Jesse, cross court to Emmanuel, gives up to Glover. 15-footer rolls around and out, rebounded by Rutgers. This is Greer. Nice can take the lead. Billet can't get a shot off. It's Reggie Jesse now. Well, Jesse can play off him because Jesse is 6'6. Long arm reach. He can play off Billet a little bit and still challenge his shot. Didn't move his feet quick enough right there. And Reggie Jesse called for the personal. Well, right here, Dabney's going to get this. Sherrod, little dish inside. Emmanuel had to come over and help, and Dabney, the recipient of that good fortune. So Dabney to inbound it. He's a sophomore. Now Billet has it stripped, taken away, knocked out of bounds, saved by Greer. Good Scott hustle play. Have it. Greer, not much in evidence yet. He's the second leading scorer on this team. Jesse trying to cover him very tightly. He's their second three-point shooter besides Billet. Willie Shaw on Mike Sherrod. Shot clock winding down. Now down to six. Solid defense right there by St. John's. They must be aware of the shot clock right here. Don't gamble, don't challenge, and above all, do not foul. Kyle Cuff will pressure the inbounds. He just entered the game as well, right number 23. Here's Sherrod driving hard on Shaw. Good defense. It ends up on the top of the basket. Does not catch iron as the shot clock went off. Jesse to the cutter. Kyle Cuff missed it on the left-handed layup. 
Turn around, jump is good. He's a nice player, you know, he gives them a lot of everything. A versatile kind of performer, can put it down, can pass, can shoot mid-range shots. Mike uses him off the bench to give them a little lift offensively. And I think if, if Omar Cook ever does sit down in a game as a point guard, you'd probably see Reggie Jesse playing there more often than not. I think you're right. And at 6'6", six, 6'7", six, six, that would be an unusual matchup. Watch Jesse right here. He displays some skill. First of all, good vision and makes a nice pass to tough cutting. And of course, then when he gets it, the poise to hold the ball, wait till the defense clears. Nice little play and shoots it over the big man. And he felt the pressure of the defense, put it up in time to get his first bucket, did Reggie Jesse. It's nice to bring a senior, you know, Mike, off the bench. We see so many teams that have so many young players playing prominent roles in the Big East. Reggie Jesse gives them a steady hand coming in off the bench. 12-9, the Red Storm. If Rutgers has yet to commit a team foul in this game. Oh, I like that play. Cook rolling to Kite. He drew the foul. So a little pick and roll executed by the Red Storm. Shot Kent's got his first personal. Sometimes you wonder about whether you should go zone a little bit against St. John's. Right here, classic pick and roll as you described. Kite taking it pretty hard to the basket. Mike Jarvis thinks that this guy can be a player. And of course, his numbers aren't very staggering. And his free throw looks a little bit strange, but he's a young, inexperienced player. He has length. Mike feels like he can be a good shot-blocking presence. A freshman from Rockville, Maryland. So far, doing a very good job on Kareem Wright, right on the bench right now, not having a start to a great first game that he had the other night. Full court pressure for St. John's, 1-3-1. You'll see some traps in the corner. Sherrod dribbling through the trouble, hands it to Dabney, then got stolen by Reggie Jesse. Jaquite hands to Cook, and off go the Red Storm, up by four. Nice change in defense by Mark Jarvis. When you change defense and the other team turns it over right away, you've succeeded. You've thrown their rhythm off by requiring them to do something a little differently. Kyle Cuff, corner jump, rolls in and out. Bangura couldn't come up with it, and it goes off of him. So 11.44 remaining in the first half. St. John's 13-9 will return to the rack after this. Mike Crispino, Bob Wenzel back at Rutgers. St. John's by four. They've shot well, six of 12. Rutgers has made just three of 12. Jeff Greer is scoreless thus far, but he's moving up on all of the important Rutgers career list. You see him there. He's 18th on the scoring list. He's making his way up on the rebound <laughs> list too, isn't he? He really is. Three more rebounds, and he will be only the third player in the history of Rutgers to have scored 1,000 points, have had 500 career rebounds, and have dished out more than 250 assists. So those statistics mean that he is a versatile player. Now double teamed in the corner, and he's got to call a timeout. Nice change right there by St. John's. You know, they opened with the half-court trap. This time they trapped that half-court right over the 10-second line. Perfect spot. Rutgers has to call a timeout. We'll be back. You're watching Big East Basketball. Now you can celebrate the legendary New York Yankees championship dynasty with Sports Illustrated's exclusive World Series championship package. You'll get the official Major League Baseball World Series video and this limited edition hardbound Sports Illustrated commemorative issue, both free with your paid subscription. Your official 2000 World Series video lets you relive an... 11 and a half remaining in the first half. Here at Rutgers, Omar Cook, 10 assists a game. Here's one reason why. Well, he can really dish it, and this kid is a tremendously brainy kind of assist man. Extremely unselfish. And the Volkswagen Big East leader shows you that Cook's on top. Martin Inglesby with seven and a half. Kevin Braswell for unbeaten Georgetown with seven. One of the amazing things about Cook is he can find the seams and zones and make great passes. That's hard to do. Sherrod hit the bottom of the rim. Kyle Cuff came up with the loose ball. Cook oh. ahead to Bangora. Oh. Couldn't get it, but did draw a foul. You know, I was just about to say, Mike, he makes the classic easy pass, but he is also capable of making this spectacular pass, and that was a spectacular pass. Mike Jarvis giving them a little congratulations. A three-quarter court pass long down the court enables his team to get a chance to free throw line. So Alpha Bangora out of Landover, Maryland, sophomore, the line misses. 
first and two. Check this pass out. He's at the free throw line at this end, catches it, and a lob pass that length to the floor. That is accurate. Perry Collins can be using that kind of stuff today. What's impressive is he didn't even take a step. He saw the man, made the play. No dribble. Strong wrists. Especially in an era where dribbling has become what players like to do most. Omar Cook is something special. Here's Greer handing to Sherrod. Go down over the defense to Dabney. Dabney had it deflected by Bangora, but it ends up on the baseline. You know, you talk about the fact that they are small. Bangor is about 6'5", and he's a swing guy, but he has active hands. And when your opponent is trying to post you, if you can get some help in there, you don't have to be that big. Sherrod on the inbound to Dabney. Now Billito had a couple of early threes. Greer scoreless thus far. Going hard to the basket. Count it. He'll get one. Maybe three the old-fashioned way, eh? A very quick first step right here by Greer. He gets around Jesse, and the help comes, and you got to foul him harder than that if you want to make a miss. A little tap on the wrist. Greer will score when that happens. His brother had a great game yesterday when Pittsburgh defeated Seton Hall. Ricardo Greer, the older brother, the mainstay for the Panthers. So you're doing all Greer television this weekend. <laughs> right. Pittsburgh here to New Jersey. Greer Network. Uncharacteristic now, but a good move by Kevin Bannon. 2-3 zone. We talked a little bit earlier. I thought he might use some of this. St. John's not a great outside shooting team, especially with Shaw on the bench. Cook is their main threat from here. Bangura capable, but not great. And to slow down St. John's offense, an offensive foul called on Reggie Jesse. That is his second. Well, both teams have made defensive changes, and on the initial change, their opponents have turned the ball over twice. So that's a case for changing defenses. Shaw back in. Jarvis realizes that he's going to see some zone. So really Shaw is the man to, to make the most shots in that kind of a situation. 14-12. About midway through the first half here at Rutgers. And Greer draws a foul on Jaquite, who just reached in. That's his second. So Mike Jarvis, I talked to him this morning a little bit about Jaquite, and one of the things he said was that Muhammad has to learn how to play without fouling. Now, you're going to foul a lot, especially when you're a big man. There's a lot of action around the basket, but a reach foul 25 feet away from the basket is not what you want. So the team fouls, six for St. John's, two for Rutgers. We're watching St. John's and Rutgers here at Rutgers University in Piscataway. Mike Crispino, Bob Wenzel with you, and a foul inside. So the Scarlet Knights are making some progress in the paint. Well, they really are. Emmanuel, good foul on Dabby right here. Greer creates this. Emmanuel has to come over and blocks his shot, but Emmanuel's man gets the ball. It wasn't his fault that Dabney got there. Greer beating Jesse twice off the dribble in the last two possessions. So Dabney has the first of two, and now he's got three points. Well, he's 60% from the free throw line. You can see his numbers right there, reasonable. Rutgers the worst free throw shooting team in the Big East. St. John's is 12, so the two of them have had difficulties from the charity set. We're tied at 14, 9.50 remaining in the first half. The zone's been effective so far. They're doing it again, a little matchup action. Willie Shaw back in, he likes to shoot from the corner. Well, he's on this side with Kareem Wright. They could screen right and get a shot for Shaw on the left wing. There it is. Shaw up fake, can't go by his man. There's Bengora slicing in, handing to Glover. He can't get a shot off. Time running down. Cook to Willie Shaw. Three-pointer. He got hit, and he'll get three free throws. Oh, well, that's a tough play right there. St. John's executed very, very well. Nobody got out of sorts on it. They got the shot for the right guy in Sherrod, making a classic error, fouling the jump shooter, especially from three-point range. Right here, you're gonna see Cook. He's got vision everywhere. He sees this out of the side of his head. And Shaw, of course, getting crashed by Sherrod. So Willie Shaw, who is second in the Big East and three-pointers made again, almost three a game, he goes to the line and he misses. So St. John's early free throws, two of five. Take a look at these numbers, like you mentioned, that third column, 44% from three-point range. 
hit over 50% in their last six games. This guy is really a sweet stroke. Long, lean. If he gets stronger, he's going to get better. St. John shoots him at 36% behind the three-point arc, so you've got to be aware of that. That's fifth in the league. Mike Jarvis makes a note. Consulting his notes. Willie Shaw made two of three, he said. <laughs> hope we don't need that extra point later. <laughs> Coach what do you think about carry. free throws during a game as a coach? Do you think about it and say, oh, there goes another one that we needed? Well, uh, you can't, you can't afford to think about it. That's right, exactly, Mike. You know, at the end, end game is when you worry about it the most. But if you're shooting poorly throughout the game, it's like a turnover. Nice move that time by Billets. A little pull-up jumper, a little Omar Cook's own medicine. That was something he didn't do a lot of last year, but he gained strength in the summertime. Used his time wisely. Rutgers continues to stay in the matchup zone. It's been pretty effective so far. Cook long range. Oh, I mean long range. That's <laughs> NBA style. I'll tell you what. This guy, he always comes up with something special. And he's so young to be playing out here and doing all these great things and setting all these records for St. John's and big East assist records already. Guy really has a flair for the game. And since... Uh, the Christmas time practice when uh, Mike Jarvis sat him down for a few extra minutes. Cook steps in, makes a steal, goes on Billet between the legs, hands to Ben Gora for two. Classic, classic play right there. Some other guards might have sh shot that basketball. He got to the basket, kept Ben Gora in the game. I'll tell you what, if I was a shooter, I would love to play with this guy. Solid defense, too, on, on Billet. Billet open this time. Billet got open, but he missed it. The rebound, Donald Emanuel, out of a pack. So far, Mike, center by committee for St. John. Shaw's open. Shaw likes it from there, and he's got it from there. That's the largest lead, 24-16. Well, the Red Storm. I'm sorry, the explosiveness of the Red Storm right here, Mike, getting two threes in a row, one in transition, one against the zone. And I'll tell you what, they are playing very, very well. Can you say cooking? Here we go. He takes it down. He takes it right here on the break, and he has his head up. Notice how his head is steady right there. Shaw, even look from the perimeter, right way too late to get out on a good shooter like that. The follow through, point your finger at the basket. Willie Shaw could get shooting clinics. Willie Shaw's got nine of St. John's 24. Omar Cook, five for the eight-point lead. Well, right here, Cook showing his display of defense as well. Uses his left arm, and watch this. A little between the legs action. And Bangura, the recipient of the many assists that that man dishes to his teammates. Shaw's made three of his first four shots. For the nine points, he's the game high scorer. Greer comes out of the timeout with a jumper that back rims, and Cook has the rebound. Running, looking for teammates. Fires inside to Emmanuel. Reverse doesn't go. Loose ball. It'll be St. John's. Again, a nice pass by Cook right there. All you have to do is run the floor, and if you get open, he will find you. There's timeout on the court. St. John's by eight. By 8, 24, 16, 7, 10 remaining. That fabulous freshman backcourt starting to take over. Watch him direct. Look at his hand pointing where he wants his player to go. Manuel doesn't finish, and Cook gets a little miffed at him when he does miss this play. But he directs things with his hands, with his head. His eyes are always up, looking at the basket, directing his team. And you've got to be happy if you're in the St. John's huddle right now with that man directing the show. Omar Cook has three assists. He averages 10. If you want to know what he did in high school, all he did was eliminate Derek Phelps, Khalid Reeves, and Eric Barkley from the all-time assist records at Christ the King for Bobby Oliva. That's pretty good company. <laughs> That's great company. Open. Bengora missed the layup. It Omar was so was easy. Counting that assist as well. <laughs> he should have five. Well, he got caught too far wide. Instead of using the little bank shot, he got too far kind of in the corner. He should have shot that straight in instead of using the board. So Omar, who expects his mates to make him when he gets some layups, didn't get one that time. Ben Gora got fouled. Strong drive. Let's see who it's on. 
Yes. A strong drive is what Bangura is supposed to do. Early in the year, they were displeased with his play because he was one of these guys who thought of himself as a standstill shooter. As you take a look at Billet, but Bangura taking it hard to the basket is his game. That's what he needs to do for this team to be successful. Because with him on the one wing as a slasher and Shaw on the other side as a shooter, it gives him the right combination in the wings. Talking with Ben Gura at practice earlier this week, he was saying, one thing I do when I try to drive is visualize the move. Everything I'm going to do before I do it. It's a split second kind of thing, but it helps him to get through the cracks and zones. That's what he's done best recently. He really has. And, and I think that's been a big thing for St. John's because that way they can play, they get all kinds of offensive flow from the three perimeter players. The big guys don't have to do quite as much. Meanwhile, Rutgers offense has slowed down to a standstill. They've been outscored 10 0 here in the first half. St. John's defense tightening up. Greer goes baseline, kicks back to Sherrod. Shaw helps. Shot clock down to six. Bangora all over Greer. Strong move, air ball, rebound by Cook. Bangora on the open court. Spin move, lost the dribble. And it's going to be an offensive foul. He visualized that a little bit too much before he went. Right here, he's in the open floor, but the flow is catching up. I thought he was going to just stop and make a nice play. Billet steps in front of him. He'd be better off getting the ball back out to the point and making a play. Too much crowd for Bangor in that particular spot. Greer has not been off yet, Mike, and I think that's a big factor right now for Rutgers. They're trying to get him off. He's had a couple of drives to the basket, but no clean looks from the perimeter where he's very effective. Top billet long. trigger that. We've been talking a lot about Cook, but Billet averaging just as many points for Rutgers as Cook is for St. John's. Billet's got 11, and off the Reggie Jesse miss, here's Sherrod. Adding the Kent. Over the top of the defense. The big man powering in, knocked down Kareem Wright. And I don't know if you felt it, but the building just shook. <laughs> Well, Emmanuel fouled him here because he was in bad position, and he did the right thing by sending right to the free throw line. Was not a good free throw shooter until the other night when he made 10 of 11 from the free throw line. And Kareem Wright has got the first one. He takes the ball to the basket right here, and Emmanuel fouls him and sends him to the line. He's now 21 of 35 on this season. Graham Wright's got his first two points. And Rutgers back within five. Well, St. John's jumped out at him on the virtue of some three-point shooting where they made him in a row. Now Rutgers battling back, going to their staple. Man-to-man, -man, half court. Omar Cook drains one. It's good for three. I think he surprised Billet getting it off so quickly. He really did get it off quickly. It didn't look like he was going to shoot the basketball, but the two little guys going after one another, hot and heavy right now. Billet and Cook, solid, solid players for their squads. Illegal screen on Kareem Wright, turns it over to St. John's again. Well, Cook pulled the trigger quickly on that, and of course, nothing but bottom. St. John's three for four from three-point range. Cook's got a couple of them. Pull up to Jesse on the baseline. Spins it down to Shaw behind the line. Missed the shot. Billet on the run out. Kicks it to Sherrod. Did not shoot. Below five minutes remaining. And another foul on Donald Emanuel. That's going to be three on him. So the St. John's big man in a little bit of trouble. Well, the, f the fact for Mike Jarvis, as you consult with Kevin Clark there, is the three big guys that he can rotate in there. I don't think it matters who's in foul trouble. No, he'll just keep putting guys in. They are not an integral part of the offense, as you see Abe coming in here. So on the free throw line, and making the first, Rashad Kent. Abe Keda has entered the game now for St. John's. He wears number four. Does not play a whole lot. A project in the making. 
6-11 sophomore out of Holland, Connecticut. Anthony Glover came away with a rebound. I talked to Mike Jarvis before the game. He says, we got a lot of big guys. We look great in the airport size-wise, but on the court, we're small. <laughs> How about this? Kent stepping in, stealing, handing to Billet. Now to Sherrod, but intercepted by St. John's. Cook has Jesse ahead of the field. Jesse lays it up for an easy deuce. A little change of circumstance right there. Rutgers having the opportunity. Kent to Billet. Normally it would be the other way around, and they muff the fast break opportunity. Double team in the box. Kent, strong move. He just overpowered Anthony Glover. Well, that's where he's the best. When he gets it close to the basket, doesn't miss many shots. Very high field goal percentage, and because there are shots like that that he's taking most of the time. Kent does not take any bad shots. Under four minutes remaining. St. John's by seven. Kata sets a screen on the roll. Goes to the basket. Laid it up, but missed it. Got his own rebound. Fights for it. Gonna shoot it again, and he's got it. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Abe Kata, the sophomore, at 6'9", able to scrap in there and come up with a couple extra rebounds and get his first bucket. Well, that's a bonus when he does that, makes that kind of a play, because St. John's doesn't expect him to. 33-24. Greer has been very quiet, just three points. Trying to get the ball to Kent in the paint again, and Glover being backed in underneath there. Glover, a solid player, but Kent much, much heavier. There's timeout on the court. 3-12 remaining. Abe Kata, a little boost off the bench for St. John's, and they are up by nine. We'll return to Piscataway after this. Mike Crispino along with Bob Wenzel. We're at Rutgers University, Lewis Brown Arena. St. John's by nine. They have won six straight in the series, played between the two schools. Going back to uh, early Big East play, Bob Wenzel coached the Scarlet Knights to a couple wins, but uh, since then, Red Storm have dominated the series, and they lead in this game by 9, 33 to 24. Of course, the Red Storm last year, the Big East Conference champions, and uh, Barkley and Postel, and uh, those guys are all gone, and Omar Cook and Willie Shaw taking over. And of course, uh, Eric Barkley was a tremendous, tremendous player. And when he left, people thought, oh my gosh, what's going to happen to the point guard position? Well, welcome to the new era. Once you get that conduit of recruits coming to any school, really, it seems to just flow. They seem to have momentum. Sherrod shooting it, front rimming it. Bangora got a piece. Kata ahead to Willie Shaw. Shaw lays it up and in. Oh, my God. Even the big men get in the act. <laughs> you know, it's a funny thing. When one guy is such a great passer like Cook, other guys tend to become better passers because they see that all the time. Kata doing an unbelievable job in his minutes right here. Largest lead. Rear to shoot. Has an answer. It's worth three. So Rear now has six. He's been silent so far this game in terms of perimeter shooting, but he needs to do that for Rutgers to stay in the game. He's one of those guys that's kind of an, an invisible assassin. You don't, you know, he doesn't do anything spectacular at the end of the game. He's got 16 points and six rebounds. Scarlet Knights have made four of their six attempts outside the arc. Here's Jesse, cuts inside, stripped. Sherrod has it. Running hard. Now he'll pull it back. St. John's by eight. We're headed toward the two-minute mark here in the first half. Rear just hit one. He'll shoot it again. He's got that one, too. The three-point shooting of Billet and Greer, very key for Rutgers offensively. It's keeping him in the game right now. A 30-second timeout called by Mike Jarvis to slow down the momentum here as Kevin Bannon, Scarlet Knights, have cut the lead back to five, 35-30. Coming up at halftime, the Big East Wire. Seems like old times. Bob Wenzel will not be singing. We'll be having video highlights of Georgetown and Syracuse. And, of course, the statistics and highlights of this first half. Right here, this is what's keeping them in the game right now. Greer has had two consecutive three-pointers to keep him in the game. That off a billet 
play. And here he is challenged well by Kata and makes it anyway. Greer needs to be on track for Rutgers to beat St. John's. And of course the three point shooting right here. Rutgers five for seven as you can see. And that is a big part of their offense. They are not a high scoring team, but those two guys are accurate from behind the arc. Omar Cook handling St. John's by five. Final two minutes. Cook tries to go by his man. He cannot. Now Ben Gura in traffic. Hit. No call. Kata. And it's off of Kareem Wright. Bad shot right there by Kata, but one that Mike Jarvis doesn't particularly care that he takes. Kevin Bannon trying to encourage his team to stay with it defensively on these special out-of-bounds kind of plays. Sometimes people fall asleep and they get easy baskets. As a couple of other Big East teams found out yesterday, it's tough on the road. Cook nails a three right in front of Kevin Bannon. And Kevin, you can see, upset. That's three three-pointers by Omar Cook. Well, Cook and Billet really dueling each other right here. Solid. Billet open right here on the on the dribble drive. They get it back to Greer. Again! Greer hasn't touched the rim in his last three shots. Now he's got 12 as St. John's throws it out of bounds, but it's off the Scarlet Knights. Oh, I love this duel. Greer and Billet knocking in threes from the perimeter when their team needs it most. Omar Cook doing the same for St. John's. Great, great matchups. 34% from behind the arc and an offensive foul here on Abe Kata as he just shoved Todd Billet backwards. A little bit of a moving screen. Mike Jarvis vehemently disagreeing with the call. Well, he's done a heck of a job at St. John's, hasn't he? Yes, he has. A gentleman and a scholar and a terrific coach. Had great teams last year and has reaffirmed it this year. He told me earlier today when I was speaking with him, he was a little concerned about the fact that they did so well early. I think because of a young team, you know, they beat Kentucky and that kind of thing. They, they're probably feeling a little too much about themselves. They've gotten back to some basics now. Well, you could apply that same theory to Seton Hall with the great start they had. Now, they've been troubled. They lost yesterday at Pittsburgh. You saw that. Yep. And, and what happens with young too players... Too much too soon? Yeah, yeah, I think so. And uh, it's happened with both of those teams. And getting beat by Hofstra, and Hofstra defeated both of these two teams, Jay Wright's club. And uh, But I think the, the real season has begun. The Big East Conference 16-game schedule. And this will tell what these teams are all about. Three-point lead. Cook again! You White must rhythm. be kidding. <laughs> he shot that from Newark. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, he is so much fun. It's hard to take your eyes off him when he's playing out there. I mean, the guy does everything. And you don't want to talk too much about him to the detriment of his teammates. But oh, he just does everything. Rutgers going to look for the last shot here. St. John's going to have the ball to start the second half. He nearly stole it from Billet. Oh, oh Billet answers it. <laughs> Final seconds ticking off. Cook in traffic. Front rims it. So Rutgers took some big shots from the red storm of Omar Cook. Four three-pointers, but Jeff Billet answered with three himself. As Rutgers made seven of nine against Mike Jarvis. This thing's heating up as they head to the locker rooms. 41-38. Fantastic three-point shooting by both teams. This is going to be a hot one. I feel it going to the wire, Mike. We'll be back. Halftime activities coming up from Piscataway. Wall Street. The Statue of Liberty. Times Square. Madison Square Garden. The Guggenheim Museum, Lincoln Center, Fifth Avenue. At St. John's University, you can take advantage of everything there is to offer on campus as well as off campus. When do you first realize it? Is there a defining moment? A clear turning point? Some kind of sign? Do you choose it, or does it choose you? When do you know you're an athlete? When you win your first trophy, or break a record, 
Or is it when the thought of losing keeps you awake at night? When do you know you're an athlete? When you can't stop playing. Welcome back to Rutgers, St. John's Red Storm 41, the Scarlet Knights 38. Mike Crispino, Bob Wenzel high above the rack and about two and a half minutes remaining in that first half, Bob. St. John's led by 11. Rutgers got right back in it, did it quickly. How did they do that? Three-point shooting in the person of Jeff Greer and Todd Billett. They were seven for nine from three-point land in the first half, and that's the story of the game for Rutgers. That's why they are in it. Let's take a look at it. Right here you can see uh, Omar Cook doing his thing, which was pass, handle, run the show. Classic two-handed bounce pass to his partner, Willie Shaw, who does tremendous things, the dynamic freshman backcourt right here. Also, Cook dialing it up from three-point range. He was four for five from long distance as well. His adversary on the other side, Billet, four for five from three-point range. And Greer, adding his shots near the end of the half, gave them the spark they needed to stay in the game. And as a result, it's only a three-point deficit right now for the Scarlet Knights. Well, the statistics at halftime, the field goal shooting of St. John's over 50%. Bob talking about the three-point shooting, which is tremendous, but a surprise here. St. John's not a good rebounding team. They've been out rebounding 9 of 14 of their games, but today, 19-9 the advantage, and in the paint, that added up to a 20-11 to advantage as well. Well, that's right, and a little uncharacteristic for the Red Storm, but they are a team that has lots of variety, and this is going to be a terrific second half. The three-point shooting has to heat up for both teams, especially for Rutgers to stay in it. We'll be back in a moment. Time at Rutgers 41-38. St. John's has the lead. Today's game is brought to you by Cooper's Tires. A lot of mileage for the money. Cooper Tires, drive on. Red Storm by three at halftime. Honored here at Rutgers, the 25th anniversary of their Final Four team. James Bailey on hand, their second all-time leading rebounder. Eddie Jordan, their all-time assist and steal leader. Abdel Anderson there in your screen, the lanky small forward for that squad. Got a huge uh, round of applause with they all as Tom Young, the coach, out there as well. 1975-76. Great accomplishment. Big year at the Rutgers University for basketball and uh, quite a tradition here, of course, over the years. Been in the Big East since 95-96. Have yet to go over 500 in a Big East season. Billet made a steal and drew a foul. Well, solid defense by Rutgers, trapping in the corner. Bangura did not use his dribble wisely, backed into a corner, and Billet and Wright double him. And Todd just out hustles everybody for the basketball. It looked like Shaw was backing up, but got the foul anyway. So Willie Shaw draws the foul, first on St. John's. Three-point lead as they start the second half. Down low, and a foul called. The entry pass made. Rashad Kent will go to the line, and the big man, Kareem Wright, showed some good passing ability. Well, they really did. A little high-low action. When you pass the ball from the top of the key, there is very little help available. And, of course, take a look at these shooting percentages in the first half. St. John's 10 for 21 from two-point range and five for seven. Rutgers only four for 13. There were only six points scored by the post players in the first half for Rutgers. And the Beef brothers, Kent and Wright, not doing it offensively. Rashad Kent, Fairmont, West Virginia. The junior gets two free throws and he's got six. Scarlet Knights back within one. Kevin Bannon trying to establish them early. He knows that Greer and Todd Billett will get their three-point shots. He wants to get the big guys involved. Anthony Glover is having trouble moving that big man wearing number 44, Rashad Kent. He really is. And Glover, a tough, you know, physical player himself, Mike, but Kent just too heavy. Once he puts his body on you, you're not going to move much. Huge weight difference. Cutter is Cook. Got fouled. They will not count the bucket, but Omar Cook made a great cut to the basket to take that pass. Talk about changing things around. Right here, Glover finds Cook, 
Usually it's the other way around. And he was fouled before he made his move to the basket. So as a result, they only get the ball inbound. No shooting. Two on Kareem Wright. Alfred Bengura has got billet on him. Double teamed. Fired cross court. Nearly stolen by Kent. Here's Glover. Hard drive. This is off to the left. Muhammad Jakite could not handle it. Well, Mike Jarvis frustrated right now. They have trapped Bangora twice and come up with turnovers. Bangora not handling the situation well. Glover pass was a little bit too fast. And the guy in the band caught that one. So Anthony Glover sits down. Watch Rucky try to establish inside. High low. See, no help right here. Kyle Cuff has entered the game. But a right hand floater doesn't go, and Omar Cook has the rebound. game just underway in the second half. Both teams coming in at eight and six. St. John's though has two conference wins. Cook, not that time. Rebound to Kite. His rebound shot does not go in and Rutgers can't control the rebound. You know, St. John's really doing a pretty good job. You mentioned uh, before that they're not a good rebounding team. They usually get out rebounded. Jaquite doing a good job right there keeping the ball alive and Rutgers one of the better rebounding teams in the league, a plus five on their opponents, and that's what keeps Rutgers in the game, even though they're a low-scoring team. Solid defense, solid on the boards. Mike Jarvis was telling me earlier this week he's got to get help from his guards rebounding. Without been out rebounded, as I mentioned, nine of 14 times, and in those games they have lost six. Uh, so it's an important category for them. That's exactly right. Key statistic right there. Everybody's got to help. Willie Shaw took a little extra step cutting across the lane. And Mike Jarvis goes back into the notebook. But what happens? Notate that. What happens with that? Coaches will bring notes with them as reminders during the game of things they want to do at certain times in the game. And also, he'll, he'll jot something down to remind Shaw that when he comes off a curl to get his stance a little wider so he doesn't travel. Always oh, coaching. Here's Kent. Tough drive in low. Kyle Cuff might have got a piece. Cuff gives them more offense at the center position than the others. Standing out of bounds. And Bangora was standing on the baseline. That is a sense of where you are not. <laughs> Bill Bradley wrote a book, A Sense of Where You Are. And Mike Jarvis, check this out. St. John's doing a terrific job on the boards right now. And it's a good thing. If they weren't, they'd be behind. Six possessions for Red Storm in the second half. Four turnovers, two missed field goals. I think Kyle Cuff is in the game to give them a little bit more offense inside. Driving, banking, and making it. Mike Sherrod has given Rutgers their first lead of the day. Sherrod, a one-man fast break, a take-it-to-the-basket kind of point guard. That was his first bucket. Bengora oh. off the dish from Cook. Oh, man, I'm telling you, what a magician play he is. Bangora, just move without the ball, and your teammate will find you. One thing Cook has is a flair for the dramatic in the sense of when it's important to make plays. He just did there, and now they're on the court scrambling, and Rutgers uses a timeout. It's a 30-second timeout. I am enjoying, Mike this matchup between Cook and Billet, aren't you? I mean, the two little guys shooting, handling. Watch that. Look at his pass right here. He sees the entire floor and immediately, with his strength, is able to get the ball to people the instant they are open. And that is not something that many people can do. Today's Big East game is produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. This is the rack. And as you know, as well as anybody else, it's a tough place to come in and win a game. St. John's here, just three and three. Although they've won six in a row over Rutgers. It's been tournaments and other places. So uh, it's not easy in this building. Well, it's a tight building. There's about 8,500 people uh, capacity right here. And you can see how close the people are to the benches right here. So lots of times the uh, opponents get harassed quite readily. Off the inbounds, an interception, Ben Gura running the court, and he got hacked. Rashad Kent got a piece of him, and that's his second. That's a good foul by Kent because he personally is not in foul trouble, and he did not want to give up an easy layup. And of course, his strength being able to hack somebody across the arms would prevent the ball from getting, getting the ball up to the basket. Alf 
Alpha Beta, Alpha Bangora. I think he's learning to play with Cook more and more as the season progresses. Bangora has the first. He was the rookie of the year in the Northeast Conference at Monmouth last year at 18 points a game. Well, five and a half rebounds. Or I should say a year before. Right. Sat out last year. But was able to practice with the team when you transfer from one Division I to another. You can practice with the team. So he learned how to play with some other players. But Cook wasn't around at the time. So he's also new. When you think of he, the perimeter players, he, Shaw, and Cook, all first-year players for Mike Jarvis. And speaking of transfers, of course, Dante Jones left the Rutgers program to go to Duke. And uh, his 16-point average certainly missed. As Rutgers, as you mentioned, uh, having some difficulty scoring points this year, last in the Big East Conference. The saving grace is they play good defense. Here's Greer. That was short. Wright came up with a great save. Billet behind the arc. In and out. Rebounded by Greer down low, and he got hacked by Willie Shaw. Great hustle by Rutgers on the offensive boards and in the person of Wright. How often do you see a 6'9", 285 guy hustle for the basketball out of bounds on this near air ball? Look at him. And throws it back out left-handed. Good pump fake to clear himself. And hustle everywhere by the Scarlet Knights. Those are the kind of possessions that fans and coaches love. And those are winning kind of possessions. We talked earlier about the fact that Rutgers has been in all close games this year losing their first three Big East Conference games by slim margins. And of course, this game looks like it's going to be a close one as well. No one really being able to explode very much in the second half at all. Jeff Greer is from Washington Heights. Cardinal Hayes in and out. Missed it first of uh, one of two, I should say. But speaking of close losses, Rutgers last year were 15 and 11. Then they lost their last five. They lost 10 games last year by six points or less. So it is a program that is close if you go by some of the results in the last couple of seasons. Yeah. Cook, that's NBA style. He hit it. That was deep, deep, deep. Maybe, maybe out of this directory zone right here. Five, Five seven, three, two area code. I think that was seven, one, eight. He thought he was back in Jamaica on that one. Five threes by Omar Cook. Ready to answer is number 22. Cook's got 17. Billet bounced low to right. Power move. Little hook didn't go. Willie Shaw took an elbow Ooh. in the head and then knocked it out of bounds. There's timeout on the court. 14-42 remaining. Omar Cook leading the way for the Red Storm. We'll be back. You're watching Big East Basketball. Mike Crispino along with Bob Wenzel here at Rutgers. Scarlet Knights have struggled a little lately. They've lost four of their last five. Hoping to snap out of it, and it's been that close to perhaps having a three-game win streak. Well, that's right. They are very, very close to, to... And you can tell by the way they play. They play with some great confidence. They're playing with confidently tonight. Greer doing a good job right now, but the, the matchup between Kevin Bannon's Todd Billett in your screen there and Mike Jarvis's Omar Cook is remarkable. Right now, Billett with 16 points, Cook with 17. Billet four for six from three, Cook five for seven from three. So we're witnessing two of the best guards in the Big East in terms of offensive productivity. Mike Sherrod gave the shot up, looking for something better. Now he goes to the baseline and resets it. Well, this is off of Billet performance last year against St. John's, which has scored just five points and one of nine shooting. Kent, hard drive, laid it up for two. Off the turnover, Rashad Kent now has eight. Anthony Glover back in the game. He has been very quiet this afternoon, just two points. I think he's struggling a little bit with Kent. You know, Glover's game is really close to the basket, and Kent, very, very physical. Now Glover, baseline jumper on cue from Bob Wenzel. He makes it. <laughs> and it should be a jumper because you can see Kent was screened off, so he didn't have the big body knocking him around. He can't play close to the basket against Kent. That's four points for Anthony Glover. A lot of people call him the baby Barkley of the Big East, but there are a couple other guys in this game you might give that title to as well. 
We've got some physical players out here. Oh. The guards doing no scoring. Greer, a 360, banks it home. So Jeff Greer's first bucket of the second half gives him 14. Mr. Consistency for the Scarlet Knights over the course of his career. Now a senior. Willie really Shaw pulls up, banks it in. And he got contact. Some of the old and some of the new right here. Both New York City products. Shaw doing his imitation of the use of the glass. Remember the city champs uh, at John F. Kennedy in the Bronx went to the state final before losing last year. Very heavily recruited by Temple as well as St. John's and John Cheney knows from perimeter scorers. He knows from basketball players. Mark Jackson, one of his former players now with the Golden State Warriors, could be the rookie of the year in the NBA. There's a shocker. Physical play. Now Sharif Fordham will give Alpha Bangura a break. Sharif, who hadn't played an awful lot. Well, I think he played earlier more than he has played now. And shot clock. The second remaining, Cook gets it ahead to Fordham, and Fordham lays it up for two. Oh, is that a way to get involved in the game immediately? We've seen four three-quarter court passes like that by Cook in this game, four layups. Mike Sherrod for Rutgers has to be concerned about covering his backcourt. Now the Sherrod responsibility of the point guard. Goes to the lane and throws up an air ball. A whistle blows though, and it's going to be on, let's see who it is. Omar Cook, that's his first. Remarkable, the guy's played the entire game so far and uh, only his first foul, and he's played good solid defense as well. As Sharif Fordham runs into Jeff Greer on the defensive end. Well, Fordham is an aggressive, aggressive player. Takes the ball to the basket, averaging about 14 minutes a game. But because Bangora has played so much lately, that has limited his minutes in the last couple of games. So Rashad Kent will take a seat. He's got eight points, five team fouls by St. John's here in the second half. And there's Todd Billich shot no good. Fordham got a rebound, and Jeff Greer well, Fordham get wants him. to play. And getting in the game and getting a layup on a fast break and getting a rebound right away gets you in the stat box right away. So Fordham gives them a little bit of energy at that spot. Jeff Greer's got two fouls and 14 points. St. John's by seven. Things have quieted down a little bit here in the beginning of the second half. Here's Cook. Rutgers came out of the gate in the second half and jumped right on him, got the lead, but St. John's has taken it back and uh, now is in a, in a situation where they're getting good shots on each possession. Anthony Glover, you see the heavily bandaged right hand, he's got a bruise there. Glover shoots again, that time from 15 down the baseline, and Glover has given St. John's now a nine-point lead. Well, you gotta admire his game because here's a guy who's used to playing in the paint and realizes that's not been effective for him and has the capability to go away and face in the mid-range area. After a slow start on the second half, the Red Storm's made six straight field goals. Phillip can't get it off to Greer. He can, and he can't make it. A rebound, Sean Oksani almost one-handed at home. But Willie Shaw has a rebound. Greer steps in, nearly drew his third, but it'll be St. John's ball. Timeout on the court. Red Storm by nine. You're watching Big East Basketball. Do windows. Mike Crispino, Bob Wenzel here at Rutgers. St. John's led by three at halftime, now by nine. Time now for the Bex Beer game summary. St. John's shooting the ball well, 58%, led by Omar Cook. Todd Billett matching him, almost shot for shot. Four of seven, three-point range. But rebounding battle, won by St. John's thus far this afternoon. And uh, they have slowed down, Bob Wenzel, the three-point shooting of Rutgers in the second half, just as they did against the BC Eagles at Madison Square Garden earlier in the week when they held the Eagles to three of 19 shooting. Yes, tremendous in bringing defense. that upset. Tremendous defense on the perimeter. Rutgers in the first half was seven for nine from the three-point land. This, this half, 0 oh for four so far. So the three-point shooting kept them in it in the first half, and the lack of it has dropped them back a little bit so far. So St. John's with Glover, Sharif Fordham, Willie Shaw, Donald Emanuel, and Omar Cook go against the zone for Rutgers. 
They haven't played a lot of zone, but this is kind of a little matchup situation right here. Again, Bangura getting stuck on the baseline. He's not performed well in that area for a couple of times this, this game. I mean, Sharif Fordham was there. A little bit too small to be patrolling along in there. Donald Emanuel got the offensive rebound, put it back once, overcame the rejection of Eugene Dabney, and got it back again, and he'll go to the line to shoot two. Well, Emanuel was a forgotten man earlier in the year when Kyle Cuff was starting and doing lots of good things for St. John. But since that time, Emanuel in the last several games, getting his minutes, about 14 minutes a game. His job is to play defense and knock around in there, use his fouls wisely, prevent easy shots. He sees a junior from Houston, Texas, and doing a good job at that job right now. Knowing your role is three quarters of the battle in college basketball. Manuel knows his. Well, in any basketball, really. You see him wearing number 21 as St. John's matches their biggest lead at 11. That's for Malik Seely, former great St. John's player who was killed tragically in the offseason. Remember the Minnesota Timberwolves automobile accident. There's Greer banking it in, a la Sam Jones. <laughs> Educated use of the backboard right there. The perfect angle to use the glass by an educated player. Matchup zone again for Rutgers. Last possession, St. John struggled with it a bit. Lamar Cook into the corner, escapes that. Back to Fordham. On the baseline, Bangora. Front rims it. Glover tried to rebound, but a good box out by Aksani. Nine point lead, Sherrod. Deals to Aksani, the left-hander. Knocks it in, it rolled all the way around and drops. And a foul called after the basket on Donald Emanuel. A little extracurricular activity going on around the basket on this shot. Sherrod penetrates and Emmanuel tries to take the charge. Axani wide open uses all of the iron to let this one go down. And as the ball is spinning around, a little extracurricular between Dabney and Emmanuel. And fortunately for Rutgers, they get the call. And that is four fouls on Donald Emmanuel. He'll have to sit down. Kyle Cuff enters the game. The uh, freshman from Rice High in New York is Emmanuel. Who does uh, give Mike Jarvis a big body. He'll have to sit down now. 9.49 remaining. Glover steals the inbounds. Now he's running with it. Wants to take it inside. Got rejected. Cuff got it. And he lays it up for St. John's nine-point lead. Cuff, although smaller than Emmanuel, and the other centers gives them much better offense. He's a good offensive player, not as stellar at this end of the floor. Jeff Greer drew a foul on Anthony Glover. That is Glover's third. It'll be one and one. Well, Cook is pleading with Andre Patillo that the foul be given to someone else. Jeff Greer goes to the line. He's got 17 points. Now he's got 18. Right here, Glover taking it full court. All the way, gets blocked. Three guys blocked this shot. You'll hear about that in the locker room. And Cuff, fortunately, in the right place at the right time. Jeff Greer has two free throws. The lead 60-53. St. John's advantage on the boards remains substantial. 27-14. Substantial and surprising at the same time. The matchup zone for Rutgers has been effective. I think St. John's would be wise to use their man-to-man -man offense against it. Little weave. Glover snuck in, got the offensive board off the miss from Kyle Cuff. And that's the one he didn't get at the University of Connecticut in the final seconds of that overtime loss to the 10th ranked Huskies. But Glover got it that time, and it's a nine point lead again. And credit Cuff for being in the game. St. John's doesn't even get that shot if one of the other centers were in there. So right now, this is his problem at this end. Axani made a nice move, but his right-handed layup rolls out. Cook running the court, rolls down the lane. No one guarded him, he laid it up. Coast to coast. And Kevin Bannon has seen enough of that. And a smile on the face of Omar Cook. 
A guy who has tremendous poise. When things are going his way, everything is great. And I think most young players, when things don't go their way, need to learn to adjust. And that's probably his place in basketball right now. Here's the BMW ultimate drive of the game just a second ago. Watch Omar Cook. Nobody home for Rutgers right there, and that is not a good defensive effort. Look, his head is so steady and so up. When he gets older, he's probably going to be a good golfer. He keeps his head <laughs> steady like that. You know what's interesting about him? You can see the defenders back off him. He's such a great assist man. You're almost looking for who he's going to hand it to. Yeah. But he took it right to the yeah, goal. Exactly. You're right. How about that number? 19 oh, to 2 on the fast break area. Omar Cook's got 19 himself and five assists. Uh, Rutgers took their only lead at 42-41 just after the half began, but since then, St. John's in a 23-11 run. How have they accomplished that? Well, they've done it really with solid defense. Rutgers tried to establish the inside. The big thing that St. John's has done is they've defended the three in the second half. That was Rutgers' biggest weapon in the first half, and it's been non-existent so far here in the second half with 8.27 to go. So it'll be Sherrod, Greer, Billet, Aksani, and Rashad Kent. They left Billet alone for a second, and he made him pay. Well, Cook is angry because Cuff did not step out and bump Todd Billet. Todd Billet lighting it up for Rutgers, and that's their first in the second half, and they need more of the same. That possession, out of the timeout, Billet received four screens before he got the shot. 19 now for Todd Billet. Willie Shaw, a little modified uh, Celtics weave. Omar Cook banked it off the backboard. Kyle Cuff couldn't come up with it. It's on the floor. It looks like Giant Stadium for a moment. And the possession error will be Rutgers. There's timeout on the court. 7.42 remaining. St. John's by eight. We shall return with more after this. Mike Crispino, Bob Wenzel, 7.42 remaining at Rutgers, and St. John's has been scrambling inside, getting some free points. Well, second chance right here. Lover on the boards where he is a demon. The reason he got it, Cuff is in the game, and Cuff takes offensive shots and possessions. And that's been a big lift. He's done a good job for St. John's. Check out the rebound battle. We've brought this to your attention a couple of times. Very highly unusual stat. St. John's normally getting out rebounded. Little conference with Cuff talking to him a little bit about, I suspect, what to do on screens because Cook was bounced off Cuff's man on the last possession, and that's why Billet was able to get that easy three. So a little conference among the three guys right there involved. So Rutgers down by eight, headed toward the seven and a half minute mark remaining in the game. They stay with Aksani in the middle. Billet bounced past to Kent, got fouled, it'll count. So far, Rutgers has scored each time after a timeout. And when they set up a play, they get what they want. Right here, Kent gets a chance for a three-point play to close the gap to five. And right here, the strength very evident. Shaw not able to prevent him from getting the ball up to the goal. And his teammates obviously happy. They, he has recovered from the flu and is establishing himself, doing pretty much what he does. A 10-point a game type guy. Eight team fouls for St. John's, and Kent completes a three-point play. So quickly back in it within five. Rutgers, thanks to the three-point play of Rashad Kent. See Rutgers players bouncing right there. That means they're trying to get ready to move. Their hands are down a little bit, which is bad. When you keep your hands up in zone, it's very, very important. What happens is if you keep your hands up, it cuts down the passing lanes. Anthony Glover had the ball deflected out of his hands. It'll be St. John's under their basket, 17 remaining on the shot clock. Here's Willie Shaw. The matchup of the zone is, desi is designed to take Cook out of it a little bit. You can see how high Billet will play him. The drives are available. Bangora, quick move. What a shot, and he got contact. He'll get a free throw. Boy, I'll tell you, that requires great balance. This is not an easy shot. It's not really a layup. It's a floating shot. He takes off outside of the paint, and that is a difficult shot to make. 
degree of difficulty, 10 on a 1.10 scale. Watch this, takes off outside of the paint, gets bumped by two guys. And if he answers with a three-point play right here, that'll be for St. John's benefit. Good hustle by Exani, huh? Couldn't get it, though, as Bangora misses the free throw, 66-59. So Sean Axani has done a nice job off the bench for Kevin Bannon up to come up with that rebound. The thing you wonder about in the players' minds right now for Rutgers, they have been in close games and they have lost all three of their Big East close games. At this point in the game, they trail by a little bit. And you wonder about what happens in the players' minds. Dream right, right there, had 20 and 13 against Syracuse the other night. Tonight, it's hard for a guy that big to be invisible, but pretty much invisible in terms of his points and rebound production. And uh, Billick got the roll. A Kareem Wright out of Philadelphia, the sophomore. Just getting in the groove kind of a Big East play. Exhorting his team off the bench as Billick's two free throws have put the lead back to five. A defensive stop right here is absolutely necessary for Rutgers. You can see they're matching up to people, but still playing in zone. Billet kicking off Greer. They switch people on the perimeter. Some dribble penetration by St. John's would be good. Right now, Rutgers has got St. John's standing still. Up top to Bangora, and that might have been the first mistake Omar Cook's made all day. He was anticipating Bangor going to the goal, but he wasn't going. Looking for the alley oop, and somebody ooped. Mike Jarvis seems composed on the bench with a five-point lead, but anything can happen in this game. Rutgers has been solid the last few possessions defensively. Billet being double teamed, steps back behind the line, missed it. Run down by Cook, out of bounds, and it's going to be Rutgers' ball. At least that's the call that's made. Jeff Greer to inbound. We're glad you could join us for St. John's Rutgers here in Piscataway. Chris Pino along with Bob Wenzel. The New York Giants, just up the road a piece, have pounded the Minnesota Vikings. And they are going to the Super Bowl. That's the big story in New Jersey today in New York. But secondarily, St. John's and Rutgers here in the Big East. Willie Shaw now has four fouls. That'll be a concern down the stretch here for Mike Jarvis. And the funny thing with three of Shaw's fouls, they have been not on his guy, the guy he was guarding. They were in situations where he was coming to help. And he's not upset about that. Mike Jarvis has to make a decision. 5.37 left. Whether he's going to take him out or leave him in. I would leave him in with this amount of time, with this kind of cushion. Consulting with his fellow assistant coaches, his son and Kevin Clark, German player. Well, Rutgers gets one of two there, but they've done a nice job on the free throw line tonight. 18 of 21. They came in shooting 58%. So they have picked it up in that category. Down low. Glover, contact, banked home. Basket won't count. That's where St. John's has to go against the matchup, Mike, because the, the matchup has been effective in covering the perimeter game. St. John's has to pound it inside either with the pass or with the dribble. They get no shot right here. Next foul, they will be in the foul shooting situation. Stolen by Jeff Greer, but Bangora got it back. The uh, St. John's Red Storm have committed 10 team fouls. So Rutgers will go to the line for the rest of the day, and uh, St. John's now is mentioned as six, rather. Rutgers has six. Cook not involved in the game offensively much in the last four possessions. St. John's standing around a little bit. Bengora, nifty move. In traffic. Left oh, hand. Oh got it to goodness. go. Oh, my goodness. Boy, did they need that. They are out of sync offensively. And he stepped up. Great, great play. 15 for Bengora. And uh, here's the shot. Change of so direction, Alan Ivan, Allen Iverson. Nice play, big, big play by Bangora. Rutgers will stay with the matchup zone. Shaw's got four, remember? Hands to Bangora, they go into the weave. Shaw on the 
the corner. He likes it there, but he's guarded by Sherrod. Now he drives in traffic. That went in. Willie Shaw, what a great shot. And St. John's, to their credit, very intelligent plays. They struggled trying to get an outside game going against the matchup zone. The use of the bounce to take it in, very good adjustment by their players, Shaw and Bangura. Kent has it taken away, but Billet comes up with it. In traffic to Greer to shoot for three, in and out. Billet got the rebound. He banked it in. Among the trees, the little guy. Now Rutgers needs to make an adjustment. They need to play the matchup zone, but they need to play it closer into the paint, Mike, to prevent the dribble drive. Lead is six. Billet not extending. Remember last possession, he was outside the three-point line. Now they're playing a little bit more compact. Willie Shaw, hands to Bangora. Corner, it's Emmanuel. His jumper is good. Oh my goodness, great, great by St. John's. They have adjusted and taken what the defense has given them. Intelligent play, Emmanuel surprising, making a jumper from that area. Kevin Bannon a little bit upset about it. St. John's with a 30 second. First the drive by Bangura against the extension. Then Shaw drives because the zone is extended. It leaves driving paths. Then the zone gets compact. No drives available. So, hit the jumper from the perimeter. St. John's intelligence. Over some good defense by Kareem Wright, Emmanuel made his first basket of the afternoon. St. John's has made it pay to go down low. In the paint, they've outscored Rutgers 40 to 27. And they lead by eight with three and a half minutes remaining to be played. And you know that paint statistic? It's not just posting up. You know, it's not like paint in the NBA where they throw it in and a guy goes one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of it is drives, dribble drives by Bangora, by Shaw. You know, they're not a post-up kind of team. They're getting their paint shots off the dribble. St. John, 63% from the field in the second half. Rutgers, a reasonable 42, but 63%. Great offensive execution by the Red Storm. Well, it helps to have a penetrators like Willie Shaw, Omar Cook, Alpha Bengura. That will serve St. John's well when the outside game is not sharp. And it has helped this afternoon. They're double teaming everybody. Bengura intercepts or nearly intercepts the backdoor play. It'll be Rutgers' ball. 3-11 remaining. There's a timeout on the court. 72-64 St. John's. St. John 72, uh, Rutgers 64, 311 remaining here at Piscataway, Lewis Brown Arena. Today's game brought to you by BMW. Test drive the ultimate driving machine at your local BMW center. And by Bex, a beer apart. Well, there's a lot of time left right here, Mike. 311 to go and only down by eight points. Rutgers still has an opportunity. They've been in tight situations before. They know what this feels like. And there you see the timeout situation. St. John's with three left. Rutgers only with one. The team behind needs more timeouts in order to stop the clock. And that is not our situation. That's good coaching. From the coach is now sitting above here at uh, Rutgers. Billet. Now they double team him. Goes by his man. Tried to bank it in. Kent couldn't come up with a rebound. Bangora does. So three minutes remaining. St. John's by eight. Now Rutgers is going to have to have difficulty playing matchup zone. They're in it right now. St. John's would be wise to use the clock here, try to get a dribble drive at the end like they've been doing. The weave has been successful in running clock. The end of the weave must require a dribble drive to the basket. Billy Shaw's had a good day. Shaw's had 15. He hands it to Cook. Cook has had 19. No time on the clock, Cook put it up, and they used all 35 seconds of the shot clock. Well, despite the fact that they didn't score any baskets, they didn't give up anything, no fast breaks for Rutgers, and they used 35 seconds. Now 225 remaining, eight point game. Mike Sherrod's been quiet, only three points for him. And so has Kareem Wright, he's been held to two. Now Sherrod's shot, air ball. Green right came up with it. Kind of scramble time right here for Rutgers. You know, everybody trying to do it on their own a little bit. 
See if they can't get something going, but St. John's pretty solid defensively with the lead. They need something quickly, and Mike Sherrod travels with the shot clock running down. Now they got to get up. He's saying they got to get up. So that means they're going to play man-to-man, -man, try to pressure the ball. They need to create some kind of turnover situation. Difficult thing to do when number 10 is handling the basketball. Omar Cook, who has improved dramatically as the season went on. They got and there's it. a turnover. Willie Shaw did not come to the ball as quickly as he could have. And a good defensive play by Jeff Greer. <laughs> now I'm telling you exactly Explain what he's Explain to me thinking. what that is. <laughs> My, oh my, oh my, it's wonderful that freshmen will turn into sophomores someday. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they will. That is a familiar pose. You see that quite frequently with coaches. That same look. Omar Cook uh, collapsed as he tried to get after Jeff Billen, and he drew a foul. <laughs> <laughs> right here. Sherrod handling the ball. Billet a little pump fake, and we actually slipped and ran into Billet. Well, we talked about Omar Cook and how much he plays. He's averaging 37 minutes a game, so well, he gets about three minutes of rest a game. And he's gone all the way this afternoon, yeah, except for about he, one minute, I think. Yeah, I don't think he's been out. Maybe he has, but it didn't seem like he was. Seems to be having the ball at all times. Billet uncharacteristically misses there. Rutgers has to bring full court pressure here. Oh, he's two of three. Now he's three of four, so the lead is seven. Nobody guarding the ball, which means five against four on the inbounds, but the big guys, Kent and Wright, standing back in the paint, making mistakes right there. Rutgers was trying to full court press, and the two Beef brothers were back in the paint. One of them should have been up. So Alpha Bengora drew the foul. That's the seventh team foul on Rutgers. So Bengora will go to the line to shoot two. Bengora's 5 of 7 from the line this afternoon. Pretty good on the season, uh, like 81%, so he's comfortable up there. St. John's is back in action on Sunday at home against Villanova. That's at Madison Square Garden. Then they have Miami at home on Monday before traveling to Virginia Tech. So their next three in that order. The Hokies won a game at home. Yeah, Ricky Stokes against Miami, their first Big East win. Kind of a pressing affair between both teams. Jarrett, Darius Rice had 31 in that game. Not a lot that Kevin Bannon can do in this situation right now. Obviously, they, only, they, they will not have timeouts left. In order to stop the clock, they have to foul. Obviously, they have to score at their end and jump into the press as soon as possible. Alpha mangoro has got 17 for St. John's this afternoon. Today's Big East game produced and distributed by ESPN Regional Television. And St. John's holding a nine-point lead. Mike Jarvis explaining to his young team how to play with the lead. The ball must move. You want to run the clock as much as you can and you want to play solid defense. Lots of times in this situation, teams get very lax defensively because they're afraid to foul. So as a result, you know, the team behind can get easy baskets if they take the ball to the basket crisply. And that's what they're going to try to do right here. St. John's trying to win their fifth game in their last six after a slow start, which included losses to Fordham and Hofstra. Billet, good penetration, but he missed the shot. Manuel got it. He got clipped on the way down, and he'll go to the line. But last year at this time, Bob, St. John's was 13 and 6 in January. They went on to win 12 of their next 13, which will finally be eliminated, being eliminated by Gonzaga in the NCAA tournament. So if you can get to be playing your best basketball against your conference opponents, it serves you well when you get to the NCAA tournament. Exactly. Especially when you have a lot of young players like Mike Jarvis has this year. And he talked to me right before the game about that. Talked about the Hofstra and Fordham losses. Tried to take them as learning experiences. Trying to ingrain some of the big guys into the game. You know, the, the center by committee concept is alive and well for St. John's. A lot of adjustments for freshmen to come into college basketball. And uh, I was at that Fordham. St. John's games, calling that. And, uh, St. John's took Fordham a little bit too lightly, I thought, and Fordham was able to pull the upset. There's a nice little hook shot from Kareem Wright. And, of course, the foul immediately to stop the clock because you have no timeouts left. Shaw is the guy you want to inbound the ball to because he's pretty solid from the free, uh, from the free throw line. Kareem Wright 
was big against Syracuse and very emphatic with this kind of move. This was the only one tonight, however. He spent a lot of time on the bench because didn't uh, they, they started the game trying to go to him. Didn't produce quite so well. And Willie Shaw's got the first. He's three of four from the line now. So three men in double figures for Mike Jarvis and St. John's. You see backcourt producing just what they have been producing in the opening 14 games. Exactly. Extremely consistent freshman backcourt of Omar Cook and Willie Shaw. Doing it big right here this afternoon. Billet to Kent. He curses a one-hander down. 76-69. Donald Emanuel got fouled down here by Kareem Wright. Well, that's what I was talking about when I said the defense gets lax. The last two possessions, Rutgers has waltzed to the basket, and by fouling immediately, 51 seconds is a long time to go. So if they foul some people and St. John's make some misses, this game is not over. Well, Omar Cook was just explaining to Donald, Donald Emanuel, I'm a smaller man. I handle the ball. Give it to me in the final minute. <laughs> And I think he got the message, at least for next time. Well, Emmanuel looking good today. He played a very, very fine game for Mike Jarvis. St. John's from the line, 15 of 20. 75% this afternoon. Mike talking a little bit right now about his numbered system. 75 back to 23. I think you might see a little bit of a 2-3 zone right here for St. John's. If they get back, he does not want to see them dribble drive like they have the last two possessions. A three-quarter court trap back into a 2-3 zone will take some time off the clock. That's what they're trying to do right now. Shaw trying to slow down. Sherrod can't do it. Glover stripped him, though. It's on the floor, and Glover came up with it. So Omar Cook has it. Under 40 seconds remaining, and Cook trying to go to the basket, but he'll slow it up. And he got fouled as Rutgers has got to foul. Here in the final minute. Mike Jarvis right there, a good play on the free throw line. He went with the three-quarter court trap, created a turnover. So instead of Rutgers scoring and then fouling, a little turnover. And this gives St. John's a chance to extend their lead. So the Red Storm bidding for their third conference win. And the Green Storm, 50% of that roster is freshmen. That's right. And, and transfers, and uh, Alfred Bangura is in his first year as well. Again, the three-quarter court trap. Rutgers doing a good job dribbling through it. And Kareem Wright off the assist from Todd Billett. Cuts the lead back to eight. Willie Shaw is fouled. 26 and a half seconds remaining. I know at the end of games, of college games, this scenario presents itself a great deal, and sometimes it's frustrating for fans, but that is the only thing that Rutgers can do right now when you're behind by eight points with this much time left. The clock is your enemy as much as the opponent. Uh, Rutgers will go to 0-4 if this score holds up in the conference. In their sixth year in Big East play have yet to go over the 500 mark. They did have a 9-9 nine and nine season a couple of years ago. It's uh, obviously important for the development of a program to succeed in their conference. And there you see Shaw misses one of two. So billet to Greer. Long range three. No. About it by Emanuel. Willie Shaw. He dribbles backwards and the time is running out here on Rutgers. Very good win for St. John's. They came in, a little hostile kind of environment, maintained their poise with their youth. And as a result, they come away with a terrific nine-point win. Rutgers, on the other hand, another close loss, battling hard, but not over the hump. So Mike Jarvis and St. John's with a win here in the Big East, 80-71 to 71 this afternoon. They got 21 from Omar Cook, 17 from Alpha Bangora, 18 from Willie Shaw in the victory, and they go to three and one in the conference. Todd Billett, terrific afternoon, but it was not good enough this afternoon for Rutgers. Billett finished with 24. For Bob Wenzel, this is Mike Crispino. Thanks for joining us. You've been watching Big East Basketball. St. John's wins it.